Hello, my name is Dmitry Naskavis. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let me tell you something. Today we're gonna continue speaking about the Ukrainian war. All American media and society switched from watching news about Ukrainian war towards trial between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I don't know why, but everybody forget about Ukrainian war, but not me. For me, it's personal. And also I think for the Russian speaking world, this conflict is a very, very big deal. Today we're gonna speak about the heroes. As you know from my previous video, I devoted my NFT collection French Squad to female fighters of Ukrainian war. And today we have two guests on my channel. Number one, we're gonna speak with Tatiana. She's the business owner from Odessa and uh, she's continued doing her business during the war. And number two, we're gonna speak with Alona. She is a military officer in Ukrainian army. She is the active soldier of Ukrainian war and she's gonna speak with our channel, with me. She's gonna speak about biggest problems and biggest achievements of Ukrainian army. Thank you very much for your attention and let's go. Hello everyone, hello to Odessa from New York City. So please tell us how's the atmosphere in, uh, in Odessa right now? I mean on the streets of Odessa. Now in uh, Odessa it's air emergency, but the life is gone and uh, act actually the city is pretty active and alive. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to see your uh, happy face it's a surprise but it's a happy face of yours you probably a very brave person uh, but in your country there is a war and you're smiling and you continue creating toys with the help of your business so this is a big respect uh, we have read uh, in, New, in New York Times a very inspirational article about a female from Ukraine. She is 51 years old. She was working in the bank in Ukraine. And when the war started, she hasn't left the country. She stayed in Ukraine and she joined the military forces of Ukraine. Can you please tell us what do you think about uh, the situation that women in Ukraine fighting shoulder to shoulder together with men. I think it's absolutely normal. Uh, a lot of women, the same thing as men, uh, they cannot be ignorant uh, regarding uh, the situation in the country and they feel pain and also they can defend their own motherland the same like men does. I already heard a comparison when uh, Ukraine uh, be, Ukrainian army and B Ukraine as a country becomes like a new Israel. Israel is a country that against everybody in the Middle East. So Israel is by them by one country that fighting against a lot of Arabic speaking countries. So Ukraine is kind of similar in the Russian speaking world, fighting against um, Russian Federation and. Uh, it's like a only Russian-speaking country that fights evil. And uh, also I agree with, with that's a prejudice and stereotype that a woman uh, cannot shoot, for example, but in, uh, in reality they can shoot way better than men. In my, when I was a teenager, I was, I was uh, shooting professionally, competitive. And uh, I had a, a classmate, her name is uh, Sveta. Uh, she was shooting actually way better than me, uh, so your uh, point uh, really makes sense. Can you please tell, uh, during the war, did you stop uh, your business, uh, toy business, or you continue working right now? We continue work uh, every day, and we don't want to stop, uh, and this is our principle. So you continue create positive energy, and this is your investment, uh, and your way to stop the war. Can we say that's your strategy? Yes, I agree with you. Uh, I can say that this is our strategy and also uh, with the help of our business, we make money and we donate a lot of money to volunteer organization. 
uh, to we supporting military and uh, children of Ukraine and uh, also doing our own job. This is a help. Can you please tell us why you decide to stay in Odessa in Ukraine? Why you decided not to flee, for example, to Moldova or Hungary? Uh, I think I, I don't have children. Uh, I have nobody that I need to save. That's why I decide to stay and I will be here until it will be safe here. Uh, do you have uh, close to you your toy? Can you please show it to us how it look uh, to our viewers? Uh, here we go. This is a fox. Is it? She has like a collar. Yeah, it's a beautiful collar. Yeah, you can take off the clothes and uh, you can change different clothes. You can create different uh, style of clothing. Are you a professional uh, toy maker or you just a person who on Thursday decided to create toys? Everything started from the hobby and I'm in this business for 10 years. So now I can call myself a professional. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, your vibe is really cool and a very nice vibe you have uh, from um, from your toys. And thank you very much that you allowed to use the uh, s the style of your toys in our NFT collection. Okay, our collection is based on French bulldogs, and uh, this is our hero's inspiration. And we create them in the style of female military officers of Ukrainian army. And one of our uh, French Bulldogs, her name is Penelope, and she was actually born in Ukraine and she was sent as a puppy to United States from Ukraine. Uh, she's very uh, young dog and uh, she's very active, very energetic, and she will be the one who will be, create, who will be seen on the NFT collection of ours holding the toys of yours. Thank you very much for your time for this interview. In the end of the interview, can you please tell us um something uh from you personally to the viewers and to, to the whole world i want to say to the whole world and to everybody personally that each person can influence the reality each person is very strong and when all these people uh, combine their energy together that's how we're gonna fight the evil uh slava ukraini um, Glory to the heroes of Ukrainian army. I'm very happy that uh, Belarusian people joined the Ukrainian army. There is a battalion in Ukrainian army called Battalion in the name of Kastus Kalinovsky. And uh, this battalion is con consists of uh, Belarusian soldiers and they fight against the uh, Russian Federation together with the Ukrainians. Uh, you need to know that the people of Belarus is not supporting Russian Federation war against uh, Ukraine. Uh, nobody asked from the Belarusian government, regular people, if we're supporting that. And uh, that's, that's why I can say that our, uh, our government is not uh, legal. And, uh, and uh, this battalion is fighting successful against the Russian Federation Army. Uh, there is some casualties uh, in this battalion. Some people died, unfortunately. But uh, please believe that Belarusian people are your friends and, and your uh, neighbors, Belarusian nation, is uh, your uh, brothers and sisters. Hopefully you know it already. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this interview. Thank you very much for uh, saying yes uh, to this interview. Uh, this is very valuable, especially that you have some more important things to do than just talk to some people from New York City uh, during this time in Ukraine. Uh, so how I can call you? Uh, Alena is fine? Yeah, sure. Okay. So first question uh, from our viewers. Uh, how long have you been in Ukrainian army? Uh, since 24 of February at uh, 3 p.m. I uh, was uh, joined uh, the uh, terror defense. So that's the day when the war started, actually? Yeah. Okay. So you kind of have a situation when you decided immediately to change your life and that's the only thing you need to do and you just joined the army. It wasn't about to change my life uh, and not my decision uh, changed my life. Uh, the, it was a decision of uh, Russian uh, uh, government uh, to change.
the life of whole Ukraine. And my decision was only about to protect my city, my, uh, my home and my family. You are a very brave person. Uh, I have a huge respect for, for that. Can you tell us, uh, is it a secret? I don't know. In what city you are located? Uh, now I'm in uh, Kiev region, yeah, uh, in, in the north, between uh, Kiev and uh, uh, closer to the border of Belarus. Okay. I'm uh, from Belarus originally, and uh, for example, in our army, there is no woman. Uh, but uh, in mm -hmm. Ukraine, uh, there is woman. Uh, so we mm -hmm. are kind of similar nations, right? Uh, like Slavic mm -hmm. nations and Russian-speaking nations. But uh, why do you think um, it's such a big difference? Now I think your army is more closer to Israeli army than to mm -hmm. Belarus army, for example. Why, for example, Ukrainian men don't care about fighting with women shoulder to shoulder together, but in Belarus, you know, people have stereotypes and they think that, okay, let us do this job and women, they need to do mm -hmm. something else. What is, what is your ideas regarding that? Um, actually, I didn't know that uh, there is no women in uh, Belarus and the Russian army. It's a uh, really surprise for me. And uh, uh, there is, uh, I think uh, there is several, but they doing like, for example, mm -hmm. taxes for the uh, salaries, uh, yeah, sure. you know, they're just mm -hmm. creating documents, yeah. but they're not mm -hmm. fighting with machine guns. So uh, admi administration work. Correct. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, uh, we can compare it with, um, for example, um, uh, LGBT society in Ukraine and in Belarus and in Russia. So it's kind of a new and old wor world. It's uh, about the culture. Uh, if we have uh, the same uh, way, we cannot use our power, our energy to uh, protect our land. Because, um, for example, me, I'm in a very good uh, sh uh, shape. Like, I have a good health. I'm a runner. Uh, and uh, all my life, I'm in sport. So that's why. <clears throat> and also, I, uh, I'm very good in graphics. Uh, I can draw, so I can uh, shoot very well. So why not? It's not about the bravery. Probably it's like about the respect. My position is about respect to men. I will explain. For example, something bad happens. And uh, in my opinion, not only men should be responsible for the health of the nation, for, for, the, for our lives. So I think it's kind of adult position to take care about myself first and to protect someone a second. And uh, in the point of view of uh, other countries where are no women, it's like I will hide somewhere and some someone will save me. So uh, they think uh, like children, like someone right. will save me. I agree with you that a woman, uh, the uh, woman, they can be very useful, not only in the army, but uh, anywhere. You know, when I was... A teenager I was mm -hmm. a professional swimmer and I remember when I was mm -hmm. 15 my competitors were female they were swimming faster and showing better results than me and uh, you know it doesn't matter the sex you know mm -hmm. uh, so I agree with you thank you very much for this feedback uh, I have uh, the following question mm -hmm. Uh, in which areas does Ukrainian army needs Western support the most right now, you think? Uh, my heart now is in Mariupol. Every time I see that uh, pictures and some news from Mariupol, I literally cry every morning because I have uh, there my, uh, my beloved friend and uh, he is wounded there. All no connection, like three days. And he the bravest man our country they protect a small territory and they fight against the huge russian uh, troops and uh, i'm beg for a government of all the countries to give us heavy weapon to make some humanitarian corridors to take wounded people to take uh, women and uh, uh, children from there you cannot even imagine how i don't have even words people who already don't uh, don't scare of the death they just they just uh, count the days until they have some food and uh, some water and uh, really i I really cry every morning about Mariupol okay so um, guns heavy weapons I understand that uh, what else uh, money and uh, 
what else people need? Uh, the most of all, uh, attention of uh, the governments of uh, all the countries, because all the countries should be guaranteed to create the corridor between some uh, safe place to Mariupol, to take the people who are wounded from Mariupol through this corridor to some safe place. And uh, only volunteers or Ukrainian powers, they, they cannot do that because of uh, Mariupol is surrounded by Russian troops. So they, in political way, they give this corridor. But in fact, they just shoot all the people who can create this so corridor. They, uh, so they had an agreement with the politicians uh, to give this nothing. corridor, but they don't, they don't they don't fulfill their promise? Yeah, they just lie because uh, they say, okay, you can go. And then they shot in the back of the every car that goes from Mariupol to, to other city. They just shot all the cars. You can, okay, so uh, you can opinion, see the pictures. Uh, only uh, way to do that, if you just control this corridor yourself with a heavy weapon. Yes, sure. And with many countries, with, we probably uh, we need more support of people, of uh, people with a weapon, because uh, it's almost impossible to move from Mariupol to some safe place. Because always these people who uh, want to go out, uh, they, Russian troops just kill them. Is uh, the army of your country still in the defensive mode? Do you see that it's going to change in the future for offensive mode? What do you mean? Uh, so now the Ukrainian army in defensive mode. So you're just defending your territory. Is it going to be changed in the future when you're going to mm -hmm. start? Uh, attacking back, like not, not just defending, but attacking mm -hmm. back from mm -hmm. defense to offense. I think uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I really hope for another situation, another uh, way. It's like uh, I hope that uh, many countries uh, um, they will just close Russia with a huge wall mm -hmm. and uh, surround with this wall Russia, just like uh, it was uh, in uh, North Korea. And it was uh, China before 1980. It was like uh, surrounded by the wall and inside their own civilization. There's something happened, nobody knows, and they, they just don't uh, touch uh, other countries. Only, for example, China, because I was uh, working there for six years. Uh, I know the history a little bit. So after 1980, uh, they opened the border and only after that uh, started to change uh, cultures, some, uh, they uh, started to accept oh, some uh, people, volunteers, yeah, and uh, before that it was just closed, uh, um, closed uh, territory. So I hope that these all countries from the civil uh, world will close this enemy and just uh, let it uh, burn in from the inside. I don't know, should we, I think no, I think we will defend uh, Ukraine as uh, long as it's possible because our goal is not to kill our goal is just uh, to push the enemy back to its territories uh, I agree in the beginning of the interview you said that uh, this war is about uh, fighting future is fighting with the past so I think in Russia mm -hmm. there is a generation of people in power uh, they still uh, believe in KGB in Soviet Union mm -hmm. some kind of nonsense and Ukraine, mm -hmm. just a progressive country that wants to be left alone and just to grow and develop and just be happy. And the uh, mm -hmm. Russian government hate to see uh, happy people develop themselves. And uh, that's why this war is happening. I agree with you about that. Mm -hmm. There was one picture from Bucha. It was on the wall. Who let you to live well? So they think that someone let us to have all the goods that we have because they are just poor people because of their government. But you, you, if you see, you said that you have some knowledge in history, uh, probably mm -hmm. you can agree that the Russian people, they need to have a czar, uh, you know, like somebody who give them permission to do this, to do that. And Ukrainian mm -hmm. people, similar to Belarusian people, it's a smaller nation. We don't have mm -hmm. a czar in our head, you know, like we can just, okay, let's go to Italy, that's it. And uh, in Russian Federation, I even remember, maybe it will be a little bit weird to say, it was a concert of Morgenstern, uh, that's the mm -hmm. rapper from Russia. And uh, mm -hmm. somebody from the audience said that I'm, I hate person who allow you to be famous like that. And, and he answered to him that 
listen, uh, nobody allowed me to be famous. It was just my job. And, uh, and that's why he left himself. So this mm -hmm. phrase was written by the Russian soldier, right? In Mariupol. Uh, not in Mariupol, in Bucha. In Bucha. In Bucha uh, on some wall, yeah. It's a Russian soldier, I don't know the... Mm, nationality but i know in bucha was some Bur buryatian guys already all the their names are famous in some in some uh, places so documents are fixed and uh, yeah these guys just left this who let you to live well um okay got it uh we will we will find the picture of this uh, statement and we're gonna put it uh, mm -hmm. add it to the video yeah. uh what is your advice regarding mariupol it's a heavily destroyed city what is the best way to find to find for example a fund that people can from united states for example send money to mm -hmm. and this fund is going to rebuild the city for example how to choose fund what is the best way where we need mm -hmm. to send the money so this money goes uh, to restoring the yeah city, i example. got it in in my magical uh, young imagination it can look like uh, some uh, helicopters will just take wounded people and uh, civilian people and also our fighters from Azovstal and from Mariupol and just grab them and go in some safe place. But there is also shooting from the air uh, from Russian sides. Uh, that's why I think it's uh, kind of impossible. That's why we need more attention of uh, uh, political leaders to uh, not let the, to use the weapon from the air to destroy the humanitarian help from the air because I really don't know it's very far away to uh, Mariupol I was there in 2019 as a makeup artist uh, we had a concert of uh, Dima Monatic and uh, we went there uh, with the bus about 16 hours can you just imagine so 16 hours to grab for them to Kiev, for example so i think it's very far and uh, i really hope uh, f for some help from the air so just like helicopters or some uh, plans you know i understand about this your idealistic idea but maybe with the help of uh, some serious military it's possible but mm -hmm. um, i'm gonna repeat the question again uh, so we creating NFT collection uh, and uh, so we're gonna have money and my question mm -hmm. to you is what is the best way to find where to send money to for example mm -hmm. if our goal is to help to restore the city of Mariupol in the future we just uh, send it to Ukrainian really... government or yeah. uh, you don't know the answer you need to do some research I don't know the answer because it's really a huge responsibility Money now is a very big responsibility. You better make your own research because for, for me, for example, many of my friends, they just ask, do you need some money? And uh, I always deny because really now and here, I don't need any money. And I just, when I see someone uh, helps like to the animals, to some abandoned people, to mothers without uh, a, anyone. I just send them, not in one place, but in uh, many places, uh, a little bit. So some can you tell us so where do you um, send the money to the mothers, for example? I know, for example, a couple people who created from some uh, from uh, old uh, buildings uh, shelter for mothers with, with children, for abandoned children, like uh, with without parents, I don't know how to say. Uh, I, I know a couple of them and uh, I always send them some money. So I think it's a little bit uh, so it's a danger, personal, uh, dangerous per personal, to, to put in, in one exactly. place. Yeah, exactly. You already said that um, Ukraine and Belarus, we are common in uh, this uh, thing that we can... Uh, fix our problems by ourselves and it's not like a vertical line of power it's like horizontal connection between both works because our power uh, works um, somewhere much better than from government and many of our uh, our guys in army are armed because of their volunteer uh, volunteers help not because of government because sometimes the government it's not is not ready to help quickly that's why every person in ukraine is a risk
responsible for uh, daily decision, like to help or not to help, to collect some money, to feed some uh, uh, old guys or not. And that's why people just share with everything that they have. That's why spend, it's very uh, dangerous to put money. Or regular money. Uh, regular money. Uh, in crypto, I'm not very educated. <laughs> okay, got it. Uh, we also supporting, have you heard about the Russian battalion uh, called uh, Battalion in the name of Kastus Kalinovsky, he's fighting this yes. battalion fighting on the yeah. side of Ukraine? Yeah, and uh, I'm really proud of these guys and I'm really uh, thankful for for everything. I'm thankful yeah, we, uh, uh, to Russian every people, we person are in... in this world. Yet, uh, yeah. as a Belarusian people, we are in very strange position right now because mm -hmm. uh, our government is uh, mm -hmm. supporting Russian side, yes. but the mm -hmm. nation of Belarus, nobody asks us about this. So that's mm -hmm. why a lot of people supporting this battalion, you know, the first in the beginning, they have 100 people. And now they have more people donating vehicles. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm paying attention to this uh, group of people uh, very carefully. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, um, uh, thank you very much for your useful information, for your time. Maybe in a couple of weeks, we're going to talk uh, again. And uh, with mm -hmm. the help of my assistant, uh, maybe we're going to get some more information regarding your advice, uh, where mm -hmm. to send the help. Um, Alena, uh, thank you very much for your bravery. Uh, hello from New York City. Uh, the the whole city is covered by Ukrainian flags. Everybody is supporting uh, Ukraine uh, in, in this place. Everybody is researching stuff. Uh, so we'll be in touch. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, really. Thank you. I think everyone agrees that these people, these ladies are amazing. Their vibe, their attitude and everything they say, all information they say about this war is very, very modern and uh, interesting perspective. I'm very happy that they agreed to talk to uh, me and I'm very happy that I can show this uh, wonderful people to you, to my viewers. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Your attention is golden for me. If you first time on my YouTube channel, please subscribe. Also, if you like this video, click like. If you hate something, click dislike. Haters are welcome as well. And also, please let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video if you have any questions or comments. Thank you very much for your attention again and stay tuned.